every word and every act his assurance and his love why fear when i am here he said and for every devotee he is here there and everywhere painfully guiding every step like a dance teacher as the bud blossomed to reveal a thousand petals it can only be said that the fragrance of the first few years is unique you know as early as 1944 there were people who recognized swami as the avatar and they wanted to compile a book like the bhagavatam you know the bhagavatam is so much about krishna's leelas in his childhood among the dashavatar if we see till parshurama that is matsya kurma varaha narasimha vamana all these five avatars did not have a birth and they did not have a death they had a task to complete they just appeared for the task completed the task and disappeared after the task it is from parshurama parshurama who had a birth and then comes the perfect man rama even in rama's life we do not have much accounts of his childhood because rama came as the perfect man and his childhood was filled with nobility and goodness of course but not so many leelas the purna avatar first was krishna and therefore ever since birth itself krishna manifested so many miracles and that is why the bhagavatam is there recording the childhood of krishna so too was the case of sai krishna and swami's teachers from bukapatnam school one was vc kondappa he kept a meticulous record of the different leelas that swami did and he was simply fascinated and he went to swami and asked him you say you are shirdi baba he said give me proof give me some proof that you are shirdi baba that was when vc kondappa had a magnificent vision after which swami narrated to him the early life of shirdi baba and his own early life both the early life of shirdi baba and of satya sai baba and vc kondappa wrote it down and chronicled it in a book called shri sai shuni charitra meaning the life of shri sai so you see in 1944 itself this book was out like the sacharitra This was one of the first books not one of the the first book chronicling swami's leelas and miracles and in fact professor n kasturi acknowledges that a lot of material he gathered from this book and along with vc kondappa there was another teacher his name is bc subarnachar you will know that there was this incident where bc subarnachar was caning swami as a punishment and when swami put out his hand so as subarnachar was caning swami in swami's palm he had a darshan of shirdi baba so it is no surprise that he ended up writing the preface called prerana in the same very same book which is shri sai shuni charitra this was a book that resulted because of two visions both of them the vision of shirdi baba one which was given in a room to vc kondappa 
the other which had already been granted years ago, two years back to BC Subarnachar in the palm of his hand. And this was the time when the first chronicle of Swami's life came into existence. After that, two others came, after which we know Satyam Shivam Sundaram has come. That is a fantastic story in itself. This goes to show that an avatar's life is not an ordinary life. From childhood itself, there are people who recognize, you know, there have been so many other miracle workers, miracle makers or people who are geniuses. You don't see their childhood being chronicled when they are still in childhood. <laughs> it rarely happens. It happens only when there is something that is beyond the mind and the head, which strikes at the heart and however illogical it may seem, people still go ahead and do it because the calling of the heart is much more powerful than the logic of the head. This was indeed the first book on Swami, but apparently one devotee came up to Professor Kasturi and said, I want to know more about Swami's life. Is there any book I could read? Probably that time Professor Kasturi was not aware of this book. So he said, there are no books on Swami. You know, not, none have been written so far. And uh, he just gave it as a casual answer and walked away. Little later in the day, Swami was talking to Professor Kasturi and Swami asked him, what was that man asking you? And Professor Kasturi said, Swami, which man? You know, when you were coming here, one person stopped you and asked you a question. And uh, Professor Kasturi collected and he said, Swami, this is what he asked me and this is what I said. Swami told him, wrong answer. Swami said, you should not have told him there are no books on Swami. You should have told him, Swami cannot be understood through books. Swami said, that is a more correct and accurate answer. Nevertheless, this was the first book on Swami's life. And uh, imagine, uh, nowadays when you have a book release, right? They book a five-star hotel, they call the press, people in the press, and uh, there's a live broadcast, so they, they have they have other literary giants present there, somebody opens the book and the author of the book reads out passages from the book, right? That's how a book launch is made. You know how this book was launched? Probably it was not a launch, but uh, a time when Swami wanted to show this book to devotees were gathered. In the sands of River Chitravati, Swami is sitting. There are probably in a session like this, there are all devotees around Swami. And Swami calls one lady devotee, her name was Leela, Professor Leela. I'll shortly tell you who she is. And Swami asks her to read out excerpts from this book. So she's very happy to do the honors of releasing the book. So she starts reading. And this Professor Leela is none other than the daughter of Lokanath Mudalyar. We spoke about yesterday, the person whose madness was cured by Swami, who built the temple at Gindi. So she started reading the book and at one particular point, the sentence probably a concluding of a chapter or the book itself, said that thus the Baba of Shirdi took the form of the Baba of Puttaparthi. And the moment she read this line of that book, Swami sitting there on the sands turned into Shirdi Baba in flesh and blood. And almost everybody seated there saw that and Lokanath Mudalyar was one of them. And he ran up to Swami and he hugged Swami so tightly. He hugged Swami so tightly that until Swami changed back into his, the teenage form of his, he would not let go. Just thinking of this, Swami used to tell one very, very, very beautiful Padyam. Swami would say in the years later, He would say, Pichulu pogotu pichi patinchunu satchida nandudu sai baba. Know what it means? He says, He is the one who cures the madness and He is the one who makes you mad. <laughs> Pichulu pogo tu pichi patin chino Sachita nandudu sai baba. In the next lines are even more beautiful. It goes Kanni ru teppinchu, Kanni ru tappinchu, Chinmaya murti, Chinni baba. He says he is the one who wipes our tears, at the same time, he is the one who brings tears to our eyes. And he is that Chinni baba, sweet Swami. How really true it is when you see this scene of Loknath Mudalyar going and hugging Swami and refusing to let go. Swami would say that God removes the madness of the world and creates a new madness, that love for God. And that's precisely what happened with Loknath Mudalyar. 
Talking about Chitravati, probably it's it's a time where prob we will quickly narrate another incident which happened at the sands of Chitravati. Many times when we listen to these stories, we wonder why were we not there, right? I don't know about you, I definitely wonder. I'm sure Arvind would uh, agree with me. Agree. You know, why were, why were we not there? Why, why was I not there to see this scene? Oh, how beautiful it would be and see those scenes. How wonderful it would be if we were the child on Swami's lap or the person looking over Swami's shoulder. This incident is very telling. One day Swami takes a group of devotees uh, to Chitravati and this is a group of 40, 45 devotees from the town of Karur. And Swami is playing with the sand and Swami asks them, so what would you like to eat today? And uh, like all of us, each one has a different favorite. So each one starts calling out a name of a dish. So Swami said, yes, yes, we'll have all of that. <laughs> and then Swami starts digging the sands and Swami brings out something which is glittering. A silver idol of Lord Ganesha. And it's sparkling and glittering as though somebody has just polished it. So Swami shows it around and Swami probably sings a song on Ganesha. And Swami gives it to one of the elders in that group. After giving it to him, Swami calls him aside and whispers something in his ear. Then after that, Swami says, oh, what about the sweets? What about the dishes I promised all of you? So then Swami collects some sand in his hand and Swami tells all of them, all of you show your palm. And Swami goes around putting little sand in each one of their hands. And then Swami says, okay, now close your eyes and think of that dish which you asked for and open your eyes. It's a cliche to say, lo and behold, but lo and behold, when they open their eyes, they found exactly the dish they all desired for. Just where they were sitting, from the same handful of sand. But this incident does not end here. Everybody is curious to know what did Swami tell that man after giving him that Ganesha idol. But he was not ready to share what Swami told him. So they stayed there for a few weeks and finally they made the journey back home. So on their way back, they had a halt at Bangalore. Right? And back below, they all booked in, they all stayed in that inn. So during that stopover, this man who had got that silver idol, he goes, has his bath, and he comes out and shows his trophy to everybody. He says, see, this is what Swami gave me. Nobody had the opportunity to get a good look at that idol. So everybody is looking at it and he's showing around. He's saying, see, this is what Swami gave me. And you can't imagine, as he's showing, pop, it just vanishes from his hand. Imagine as he is showing it to people, it just vanishes from his hand and everybody is shocked. And then he slaps his forehead and says, Oh my God, this is exactly what Swami told me. He told me, don't show it to anybody. <laughs> Swami says, I give you what you seek so that one day you seek what I have actually come to give. What he gives when we seek is not important at all. Just like that Ganesha, it will come one day, it will be gone the other day. Even if that Ganesha doesn't vanish, we can't hold on to that silver Ganesha forever. Everything is temporary and Swami would say, you want permanent joy, permanent bliss and yet you seek it in the world which by nature itself is not permanent. Logically, how can you get something permanent from something that is not permanent? And therefore, Swami says that I give you what you seek, so that one day you seek what I have come to give. All other desires, all other seeking is nothing but extra baggage, which will only slow down your journey. Swami would often quote in his discourses, less luggage, more comfort, make travel a pleasure. In fact, it was along the lines of this quote that Sri Vishwanatha Rao, came to Swami. He is the son of a certain lawyer Chidambaraya from Anantpur. So the way Vishwanatha Rao came to Swami was very interesting. He had heard about Swami. In fact, he remembers seeing Swami wearing a jubba that came possibly till his knees. And he came along with his sister Kalavatamma and his mother-in-law. And he, when he arrived to Puttaparthi, he was distraught. Because on the way to Bukapatnam, he misplaced his luggage. And so when he arrived at Puttaparthi, he was without any baggage. But his travel had not been a pleasure because he was always worrying about the baggage instead of thinking about the Lord. So his 
travel had become actually full of worry thinking that he had lost everything you know i'll come back to the story i am reminded of a chinna kada that swami says a person is taking bath in the river and as he is taking bath he sees a silver vessel which comes floating by he says wow god's blessing he's so happy he picks up the vessel and he keeps it and he's so happy and he continues to take his bath when he's busy in his bath he doesn't notice that the river waters go up to the rock take back the silver vessel and it starts flowing away and now it's in spate it goes off to the center of the river it's flowing away fast he begins to wail and cry somebody asks him why are you crying he says i lost my silver tumbler and swami would say in his discourses you fool 5 minutes back it was not yours and now you hold on and you cry as if it always belong to you that is how this world is and vishwanath rao came crying to swami i don't know what swami told him if he had told him less luggage more comfort make travel a pleasure i don't think vishwanath rao would have been comforted swami told him you don't worry by today evening your luggage will come you know that is what swami does you know sometimes he takes away from us our worldly things so that we can focus on him don't worry your world will come all of us do lakshmi puja because we want the world even in any uh, business in india if you see lakshmi photo is there which is worshiped so lakshmi is given prime importance but swami says lakshmi is a very dutiful wife she always sits at the feet of narayana you will always see that in the picture she won't get attracted by you and your offerings and leave narayana's feet she'll always be at lord narayana's feet instead swami says do narayan seva if narayana comes to you lakshmi automatically follows it is like the buy one get one free offer don't go behind lakshmi go to narayana that is why sometimes lord takes away from us what is worldly so that we can focus on him and you know it happened by the evening vishwanath rao got back his luggage as told by swami he was happy and he realized that him crying over his baggage was much odd ado over nothing he simply cried because the lord who can take away can get it back like this there's nothing to worry a little child stands praying before the lord and he has been taught the christian prayer our lord the art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done and when he stands he simply forgets everything he doesn't know and he says lord i forgot the prayer but you know what it's made out of alphabets you know the prayer right i will chant the alphabets 10 times you just make up the prayer you know it don't you think the lord would be pleased with that innocence and the prayer of that child and that is the beauty of the lord because we need not worry about how our efforts met manifest as results or how we are outwardly inwardly as long as we are pure and sure the lord is pleased i think what really draws swami close is the background goodness your first reaction to seeing swami could be something else but if you are good by heart i think that is what draws swami to you because swami would often say you ensure that you have goodness my godliness will get attracted to your goodness Swami would say this and one such family which was which had the opportunity to draw Swami to their house and make him a permanent member of their house was this family of Chidambaraiah this family is from Anantapur he mentioned Vishwanath Rao whom we spoke about his father was Chidambaraiah he was a very reputed lawyer so this person was a, this family was very well known in Anantapur and Chidambaraya's younger brother is living in Kadri. So Vishwanath Rao comes there to have his second darshan of Swami. And Chidambaraya's younger brother is again a reputed lawyer in Kadri. So he looks at his nephew and says, "You know this young boy is there pointing to Swami. You know he he can materialize stuff, he can create talismans. Why don't you take him to our house?" Why? Because Chidambaraya's house had just undergone a double disaster. in a span of 8 days they had lost two children on one friday they lost a daughter on the next friday they lost a son and uh, they were convinced that there was something evil and some something black which was affecting their family they were trying to call people who could uh, remove such evil spirits and nothing was helping so chidambaraya's brother was telling why don't you take this young boy he seems to be having some good abilities to do such things and swami retorts I don't need an invitation to visit Chidambaraya. A 16-year-old boy who is referring to a 60-year-old established lawyer. So they decide to take him to Anantapur. 
This is a town called Kuttagulla. So they get Swami a first class ticket in a coal bus. And you know what's a first class ticket in a coal bus? The coal engine is behind, you sit next to the driver, it's first class. <laughs> you sit behind, it's third class. So to give respect to Swami, Swami has got a first class ticket and made to sit next to the driver. And they travel to Anantapur. And Swami gets down and Swami walks to the house, almost half a mile. Comes to the house and uh, he is greeted there. This Chidambaraya's family is a very orthodox family. They don't allow non-Brahmins into their house. And uh, once we were talking to Chidambaraya's grandson, he is still here in Prashanti Nilayam. He was telling us that even Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy, who later became the sixth president of India, he was not allowed inside their house because he was a Reddy. <laughs> but Swami was special, right? So Swami was allowed into the hall. So he was sitting there in the hall. Again, only into the hall, not into the kitchen. Right? So Chidamriya's wife comes, she's very suspicious. Who is this boy? He doesn't look like a Brahmin, does he? And he's allowed inside the house. So the first question she asks is, in Telugu she is, Yemitwal Miru. She says, which caste do you belong to? <laughs> I mean, that's why I said, his feelings, the outward feelings alone important. The first thing she asks God incarnate who has come into their house is, which caste do you belong to? Swami said, all castes belong to me. She's not very impressed. <laughs> she says, oh, this is a textbook answer from a spiritual man. So she goes into the kitchen and she gets a cup of coffee and she doesn't give it to Swami. She comes midway and right in the middle of the house she keeps the coffee and walks away. So Swami has to get up, walk up and take the coffee. <laughs> he takes two sips, then he turns around and he says, come, to, come with me to the garden. So he walks out into the garden, he shows one particular spot, he says, dig here. So they start digging in that place. Swami materializes some vibhuti, drops it there, some talisman, he drops it there. He pours the remaining coffee there. He says, cover it up. And he says, don't worry, nothing else will affect your family anymore. Then Swami walks into the house, calls Chidambaraya's wife. He says, Subama. And she's shocked. How does he know my name? Calls her by name, the 16-year-old boy. But, you know, all said and done, she's a mother, right? And she's lost a son who's just about the same age. So definitely she's drawn with a motherly affection. She looks at Swami. Subama, Swami says, Henceforth, I'm going to live in your house. And she's so thrilled. She's so surprised by this remark of Swami. And then Swami starts walking around the house. And he walks into the puja room. And he looks at Subama and says, Can I sit here? <laughs> Just a matter of minutes it takes for him to break into our hearts, doesn't it? She says, Swami, this house belongs to you. You can do anything, anywhere in this house. And she sits there and that's how Swami enters that house and Swami blesses her. Don't worry, I will take care of all your children. I will take care of your mangalyam. I will take care of your husband. He will have a long life. You know, the family would recount that blessing which Swami said, I will henceforth always live in your house. For five generations, six generations, they still are very, very ardent devotees because many of the families we talk about in these sessions, they were devotees, probably their children were devotees, but it stopped after that. They could not pass on that faith and devotion to the generations. But this is one family, I think it's six generations now, they still come here, they still, they were named by Swami, they were, many of them studied in Swami's universities. I think they said, this is what Swami blessed. He said, I'm going to live in your house. This is what he meant. They narrate, this happened much later, 1965. 1965, Chidambaraya was once traveling to the city of Madras. He was part of the board of a company there. So he was traveling late into the night. He was in the train all alone. So he wanted to ease himself up in the middle of the night. So he got up, went out of the compartment. He opened the door of the coach thinking it's the bathroom door and stepped out. And he falls down. What happens to him a few days later, they get a telegram saying that Chidambaraya is admitted in a hospital here. Come and see him. And uh, what does this Subama do, wife of Chidambaraya? She does not go to the hospital in Madras. She rushes to Puttaparthi. <laughs> Why? Not to question Swami, but to thank Swami. She said, Swami, you have kept your word. The word that you gave me when you came home, you have kept it. Swami said, go, go, go and see your husband. And Swami says, he's like a just born calf. That's how he's jumping. Nothing has happened to him. Don't worry. <laughs> and she rushes to the hospital and she sees there her husband is sitting. 
happily on an easy chair and reading a newspaper there is not a scratch on even his spectacles that's how she's he saved from a <laughs> walking out of a moving train and the best part is you know this is where sometimes the beauty of swami's maya comes swami appears as a man there wakes up this man who's unconscious admits him in a hospital sends the telegram does all this then when subama comes to swami she says you should be grateful just a few furlongs away the bridge was coming imagine if he had stepped out of there the lord who could save a man who's jumping out of a moving train without a scratch to his spectacles is worried about what happens if he jumps off the bridge <laughs> and he says you should be grateful that didn't happen you know this is where sometimes swami catches us off guard are you ready to believe me are you ready to believe this trick of mind but endless isn't it the glory of our swami